In their native Brazil, however, Giant and Common Salvinia are not the mass of invaders that threaten to cover lakes and slow-moving bodies of water. They are just part of the ecosystem. What keeps the ferns under control is what keeps most native plants from exploding, natural enemies. One in particular may be the answer to controlling Salvinia in the United States. This project, not to draw too fine a, a, a thing on it, but it, it's, it's, it's really what's known as a classical biological control program, which means you have an exotic come in, it's freed from its natural enemies, it, it proliferates and goes unchecked throughout the environment. So the process is you go back to its origin, you look around, you find natural enemies, you test them for, for specificity, and then you reunite the natural enemies with their, with their host, or their weed host in this case. The natural enemies for giant and common salvinia are tiny weevils, not much bigger than a match head. Our first releases of the weevil were in October of 2001, and uh, we found that they were able to overwinter in East Texas, and which is a very good sign. As far as when you may expect to see results in a reduction of salvinia, it's hard to say. In tropical areas, the reductions in places like Australia and New, Zin uh, in New Guinea have been quite dramatic. There have been almost 99% reduction within two years. And that's what the USDA and Texas Parks and Wildlife are hoping for that the biocontrol will accomplish what other control techniques cannot. But one of the most spectacularly successful biological control uh, um, phenomena is, is, is the biological control of salvinia. It's, um, there's a little weevil which is very specific to salvinia. It's called Curtabagus salvinii and uh, it it gets rid of tons of the plant in a, a few months. On the Sepik River, it cleared huge areas 18 months after it was introduced. Massive tonnage. Now, it doesn't eat at all. What it does is the larvae mine down the leaves, down the rhizomes. The leaves then fall apart. As the plant falls apart, it loses its ability to float and sinks to the bottom of the lake to decay. Mitchell says salvinia is not the only thing to die. The weevil, he says, is so host-specific that once the giant salvinia is gone, the weevils simply starve to death. We've had the beetle now has been released into a dozen other countries, and we haven't had a single report of the beetle attacking anything else, even though there have been many millions of beetles desperately looking for something to eat after they've destroyed the giant salvinia. This particular insect is one of the most host-specific or plant-specific uh, insects ever used. And in those cases where testing has been done, there have been no problems with insects moving on to other plants. Most insects can only feed on one or two species of plants, and those plants are usually closely related. We have no close relatives of salvinia in the United States. Uh, so uh, this insect has been tested thoroughly by the Australians and also by our lab. And so we're very confident that it will not cause any harm to native plants or any other non-target plant. This tank here was infested 25 days ago with about 200 adult Certabagus weevils. If you look at the plant material, it's starting to turn brown already, especially around this area. In about 10 more days, about 80 to 90 percent of all the plant material will start to turn brown. And in 15 more days from today, all the adults will begin to emerge. This USDA APHIS facility in Mission, Texas, is already gearing up to meet the future demand for the weevil and its offspring. It's not that salvinia weevils can't breed in the wild. They just refuse to fly far enough to reach other infested sites. Flores says people introduce the weed into our reservoirs and streams. Now it will be up to the USDA with the help of other state agencies to take care of the problem. Based on what's happened elsewhere in the world, we're reasonably confident that we should see significant reductions of salvinia to the point perhaps where it no longer is going to be a problem. It'll never disappear. It's always going to be here now. It's part of the, the Texas landscape, but it should just be a, hopefully, a minor part. 
Besides Texas, both Giant and Common Salvinia are already problems in much of the southern U.S. Tipping projects that the weed could encompass most of the southeast and south Texas, parts of the southwest, and most of California, and the upper Pacific coast. An invasion of this magnitude would have severe, even catastrophic consequences to fish, wildlife, commerce, and industrial water use. Currently, the most promising control agents appear to be herbicides and the host-specific weevils for common and giant salvinia. The key to stopping the rapid spread of salvinia and controlling infestations before they create environmental and economic damage is early detection and action. If you see either salvinia in the wild, please report it immediately to your State Department of Natural Resources, Game and Fish, Parks and Wildlife, or other appropriate state agency. Or call the National Toll-Free Salvinia Hotline at 1-877-STOP-ANS.